my honesty, my strength, my ability to connect with people. My amazingness as a woman is my steadiness. So I used to be very much up and down all over the place. And now I feel that I have that fullness within myself and that strength. And that gives me a real good foundation to live my life. When I really feel how beautiful I am, that almost goes out to the world. And that's what makes me amazing. And when other women do that, I feel their amazingness. And so it's just that, that's what we all bring as women. That when we connect to how beautiful and precious we are, the world can't help but feel it. It was pretty extreme, um, the teenage years for myself um, and my whole family, um, as parents and everyone, we call it the seven years of hell. And I understand how it feels like when you're really young, because I remember being 13 and the feelings were so intense and you just wanted this easy way of being with yourself and you miss it from being a kid because there's this easier way of being with yourself that now you've got all this intensity in your face. When I went to high school, I remember, I remember feeling like a bit of a dag on my first days of high school because we kind of had a little bit of a hippie-ish family in terms of the city. Up here, we weren't hippie at all, but it was just a bit alternative and I, I went to school, I think I remember wearing a tie-dye t-shirt and jeans or something and I kind of got to high school and I remember looking around and going, right, I've got to sort myself out. I was so insecure and so worried about what other people thought and how, you know, I was going to be perceived that everything was calculated, like all of these teenagers hung out in Elwood on this canal. And so I went down there on the last day of high school, I mean last day of grade six, so I was going into high school the next year and I dressed up in all this 70s gear and I froed my hair right out and got my packet of Peter Stuyvesant soft pack and just kind of waited for Becca and Kyla on the bridge and lit up a cigarette and blew a smoke ring and all the guys were like, oh, another little Baldwin. That's our last name, so we were called Baldwins. And um, I saw all the guys looking at me and I was like, yep, check. I, you know, I did it, I did it correctly. I was very popular um, and went out with older guys and did that and I got away from all the violence and that kind of stuff but it was very much wild times, party on, like kind of a rock and roll lifestyle. We all thought, you know, we had it all going on but lots of just weekend parties were every weekend. There were two nights of the weekend and they were debaucherous. There was lots of alcohol, lots of drugs of a wild variety. And so drug taking for me at that time was this um, this way to medicate. It was a way to um, numb that feeling of intensity and uh, numb that feeling of anxiousness and and um, be f and fit in and be cool. But fit into what? Like, what did I have to do to myself to, to fit that mould? It was kind of like I was this bomb because I was holding everything together in all these ways, but then I would just explode very violently, quite frankly, whether it would be with my mum or my siblings or if I was premenstrual and or if I hadn't had a smoke of pot. So then I um, went through bringing people back to in school hours to the bungalow, we used to call it. Um, innocent, gorgeous young people that were just trying to start high school and yeah, just taught them how, how to smoke, how to be cool. It's quite, quite sad in retrospect, you know, looking back at a thing. They were so much cooler than I was, is what I realise now. They were so much willing to be, be themselves and I was just trying to be someone that I wasn't. True rebellion is actually, was actually the girl who I thought was boring in year nine, who, who took care of herself and, and, and didn't just give herself away to the first guy that, she's, that said she was beautiful. Uh, and she had this sense that 
she was worth loving and she stayed with that despite the fact that she wasn't going to be the coolest girl in the year or she didn't have the most notoriety or you know and and that takes courage like that is true rebellion because everything is pushing you a certain way and you're being strong enough to stand up and stay with yourself and so that to me is inspiration so i grew up um in a family of doctors both my parents are doctors and they're not just doctors they're really intelligent doctors and i'm the eldest of four children and I had this idea that I had to be the sacrificial lamb of the family, that someone had to be a doctor. So it may as well be me, and then the other kids could do what they wanted to do with their lives. So I did. I used to be a fashion designer. I trained as a fashion designer originally. It was a five-year degree, and it was um, a very high-pressured degree because to get into the course, you had to be really, really good. So there was a huge amount of competition. I got into uni to study medicine and I studied medicine and the way I did it was this, we would just drink and party, drink and party, drink and party and then at the end of the year I would stop drinking for long enough to study enough to pass the exams. So in first year I stopped drinking for one week to pass first year and then in, two, in second year I stopped drinking for two weeks and in third year I stopped drinking for three weeks so it's a kooky formula but it worked. Um, when I did my degree show, we had a fashion show at the end of the, the degree and um, I basically didn't sleep for about two weeks and I just kept going through the night, through the day, designing my clothes, knitting my clothes, sewing my clothes and surviving on um, coffee <laughs> and pills that kept you going. So you, you can imagine at the end of uh, my degree show I was a wreck and uh, I went straight into a job. I had a job already on offer and I went and straight, straight away and worked in that. The culture of medicine encourages that. It encourages you to be intelligent in the sense that you can do as little as you can to get away with what you need to do. And that as long as you work and do what you have to do in work, you're encouraged to party hard. And I believe that culture is changing and I really hope it's changing. But certainly when I was going through we worked hard and we partied hard and it was a very self-destructive way of life. And there was always somebody waiting in the shadows to take your job over. So you really had to prove yourself and work very, very hard. It was also very much about how you looked. So you always had to have the latest fashion or the fashion before it was the latest fashion. So you had to be a bit ahead of your time. I worked for a big corporation in the UK and then I came to Australia and worked for another big corporation here as well. So for me personally, that took me down a, a road of just deeper and deeper self-destruction. And I ended up um, alcoholic, drinking alcoholically, and ended up in rehab at the age of 28. The industry went through a hard time and people were being made redundant. And there was a time when I was actually doing six people's jobs. They just gave it to me because I could do it, because I was so good at doing it. But underneath, I was getting more and more sick and feeling more and more pressure. So much so that I had to actually leave the industry in the end and have a break. With school and with uni, with sport, I got a lot of recognition. So it seemed to kind of be worth it. So I'd push myself. I'd get what I thought I wanted. Um, I'd achieve what I thought was success and I'd get recognition for that. The big kind of bang came for me when, when I became a mother and there was no one really else around patting me on the back saying, you know, well done, Sarah, you're a great mum. And I started to get more and more kind of um, dissatisfied and uneasy and, and feeling like, well, I'm not happy here. In my late 20s when I had started having a family and children, it was, I actually fully believed that the children came first and whatever whatever happens the children go first and then me and if you were to talk to me in that stage about you know what about yourself I would not know it's got to be the kids first once they're okay then you can look at me sort of thing I'd literally jump out of bed and just be on be on as mother and I'd be you know in my dressing gown till whatever time of the day getting everyone else sorted 
and feeling pretty yuck myself, but that's okay. If, if everyone else gets sorted, get their needs get met, I can, I'm feeling better, then I can address mine. And that all sounded good on paper, but it actually led me to be pretty much like not happy on the inside. I found with my children that I was ticking all the boxes. I really wanted them to be happy. I really wanted them to listen to themselves and trust themselves and do all these things that me as a mother, I wanted for them. But I realized I wasn't actually doing that for myself. So there was this sense of, I was telling them what to do, but I wasn't doing it myself. And they responded to that. There was a, there was a feeling of not being quite as connected to my children as I truly wanted to be. And so what I um, have come to realise is that role modelling is powerful, um, the media is powerful. And so what we can do with that if we empower ourselves with the media is we can start talking about how it really is and we can start making videos like this and we can start talking um, to young women about what's really going on without just um, reacting to what's going on and getting upset and throwing our hands up and going, whoa, it's so bad now. We can start having these kind of conversations and start having the conversations that say, you know what, you're beautiful and you're worth it and you're amazing and not be ashamed to say that. And if, you know, like we so want that for young women, but we have to be able to say that about ourselves if we're gonna hold that message. When I started to make just simple daily choices, loving choices about what I would eat, when I would go to sleep, how I would care for my body, how I would exercise, how I would ask for help to care for the children, then life started to turn around. I still work under pressure today, but the difference is, is how I cope with that and how I live with that. Um, and I'm not perfect at it at all, but what I do do is listen to my body and look after myself. If there was a feeling in my body that I needed to rest, but there was things to do, I'd do it. I would just push through. And these days I don't do that. And because of that, my, my body and my health is just blossoming really. I don't, I don't drink alcohol anymore and I don't smoke cigarettes and I don't do drugs and I don't even drink coffee. I'm just smiling all the time, always feel great, always upbeat um, and just have so much fun at work. Like the amount that I can work now as well and um, fit in my kids and fit in the boys and manage everything and still have time for myself is, is incredible. I'm not spending a lot of time trying to prove myself anymore or to live up to standards that I think I should be living up to or that other people say I should be living up to. It has to be right for me. When I honour me, I seem to have more time, more space and what needs to be done at the time I feel and I do it and I don't get worried about how things are going to be because I know that I'm, I'll do what I feel and that will be enough. Having discovered that, it's, it's so different. So now when I walk on the ward, you know, I'm walking there with a sense of, hang on, I care for myself. Therefore, it's natural to care for someone else. It just comes naturally. Everyone around me can feel it. There's something really cool about that. It doesn't just stay with me. When I really feel how beautiful I am, that almost goes out to the world. The other thing I feel about being a woman is that, I mean, it's lovely to be in a woman's body. Like, it, it just actually is. I haven't always felt like this, but lately I'm feeling like how lovely it is to be in, or to have a woman's body, you know, and to nurture myself in the way that I am and to allow myself to put on lovely cream and oil and, and allow myself to have a, a, a lovely nurturing bath. And All these little things add up to actually feeling really good and comfortable in my skin. I've just really realised 
how beautiful it is to give you yourself that that tenderness. To me, that's one of the glorious things about being a woman. It's just allowing that and feeling that preciousness and feeling that loveliness and honouring it. And that it's not connected to somebody telling you that you look lovely. That it's connected to you actually feeling that within yourself. Not for any other reason other than that you feel it because you are that. That's awesome. <laughs>